Greetings all. Welcome if you're new. Welcome back if you're not. Today we're going to be taking a look at Scalar 2.7 multi-voice output feature and try to demystify it a little bit. Apparently there's a little bit of confusion out there in the interweb about what it does and how it can be used. And I uh, thought we'd take a few minutes to get some basics under our belt and uh, go from there. So we're going to use the song notes feature here in uh, Studio One just to kind of keep us on track. So multi-voice output, probably not the best name. Uh, in fact, probably something like single note mode or single note output would have been better. Because what it does is it lets Scalar play or tells Scalar to play a play one note of a chord uh, on a given track uh, based on the MIDI channel that the track is set to or that the input is set to, I should say. It can be used with any instrument. It's not related specifically to multi-instrument players like contact, uh, sometimes I think inaccurately referred to as multi-timbral players, um, cine or cine uh, player, uh, and uh, the omnisphere. These, these players that let you have multiple patches loaded simultaneously uh, and access those patches through dedicated MIDI channels. It's not related to multi-out instruments like Impact and In Contact and some of these others. Multi-out typically refers to multiple audio outputs, allowing you to set up multiple mono or stereo channels coming out of a given instrument. Uh, it can be used with any instruments. Uh, that would be both... Uh, um, players like Contact and so, so forth that have multiple instruments residing in the player simultaneously or individual instances of instruments, uh, including multiple instruments of Scalar. And in fact, I think that's what we're going to do right now as a way to demonstrate how this works. And then we'll mix it up with some other instruments. So the setup is fairly straightforward. First of all, you want to do is you want to enable the multi-voice output in the settings. So if we go into Scalar, go up into Settings, and you go to Preferences, about halfway down you'll see multi-voice output. Mine's on. I usually use it, leave it on as by default because I use it a fair amount these days. So that is the only... <clears throat> That's the only setting you're going to need to make inside of Scalar. There's no other UI changes. There's no workflow changes. Uh, there might be some design changes in terms of how you're working with things, but uh, there's no new buttons, no new switches, anything else. So that's the first step. Turn it on. Now what you need to do is you need to hook it up. You need to hook Scalar up to an external instrument, or in this case, an additional version of Scalar. So we're just going to duplicate this Scalar track. Now in Studio One, there's two duplicate options. There's a duplicate track and there's duplicate track complete. We're going to use the complete option because we want Studio One to duplicate an instance of the instrument. Remember with Studio One, tracks and instruments are decoupled. In other words, your instruments live on channels the tracks connect to and drive those instruments. Right now, we will have one instrument loaded. If we would say duplicate track, we would duplicate the track, but we would only have one instrument. We want two instruments in this case. We want two versions of Scalar. So we're just going to say duplicate track complete. You'll see another instrument show up down here. All right, so now we have two Scalars. Scalar to first version, Scalar 2 second version. The track name, due to the way the Scalar names itself, it's a little bit confusing. Scalar 1, Scalar 2. Over here in the instruments, you see Scalar 2, which is this one, and Scalar 2 version 2, which is that one. Okay, so now we've set up a second instrument, but that second instrument is still just a Scalar instrument. So in this case, if I select that, I'm going to hear the lo-fi being played from within it. If I select this one 
And let me turn, let me just change that. We'll go to housey on this one. That's that scaler. That's that scaler, right? So now we've got two scalers loaded. What we're gonna do is we'll go back to our first scaler and we're gonna call that uh, the, the driver, all right? And we're gonna turn off any sounds coming out of that scaler, okay? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna tell this scaler, our second scaler, to listen to the MIDI signals that are being generated from the first scaler. And how do we do that? We do that through the input option right here. Right now, the input is set to all inputs, which is picking up any of the MIDI devices that we happen to have, right? Um, while it shows the other scalers listed here, uh, it's not listening to those right now. In fact, we don't want uh, scalar 2 to listen to itself. What we want to do is we want to have it to listen to this first instance of scalar. Scalar 2, scalar 2. So we're going to say listen to that instance of scalar. So now when we are in scalar 1, okay, remember, no music associated with scalar 1, and we hit a play, scalar 2 is listening to that MIDI and reacting to it, okay? So if we were to pick up a chord, we are playing the chord in scalar on scalar one. It's being picked up by scalar two and being played. So if we go ahead and uh, why don't we just hit the auto play feature there and pop over to scalar two, that's what's being played as Scalar 1, our first instance of Scalar plays. Okay, so we're almost there. We've turned on multi-voice. We've connected it to an external instrument. Now what we can do is we can change the notes that Scalar is sending to, or that Scalar is listening to, uh, based on this MIDI output right here, right? Again, we're listening to Scalar 2, and we want to tell Scalar 2 now to send the lowest note. So now when we play this, you should be able to hear that. That's just a single note. If we go to the output 1, we have a chord, Output two, our lowest note. Now what we're seeing uh, is you're actually seeing the whole chord being played, but let's take a look at what's actually going on between the two scalars. Uh, let's go to scalar two, we'll leave him over here. And let's make that guy a little bit smaller. And scalar, our first scalar, Make him a little bit smaller as well. This guy a little bit bigger, maybe. Okay, so now, again, let's just kind of re recap. This side over here is scalar one, which is our first guy up here. There's no sound associated with him. The MIDI that's coming through scalar one is being delivered to scalar two via this line. All right, scalar one is driving scalar two. Even though it says scalar one, don't pay attention to it. That's the scalar naming issue, <laughs> the way they name their, their things. So in this case, scalar two, version two, which is the second instrument here, okay? All right. It is being driven by what is being called scalar two, right? Which in track language is scalar one. Well, let's do this. Let's just call this Scalar 2. That make, might make it a little easier for people. Okay, we're going to call it Scalar 2. And we're going to call this guy. I want to match it up to Scalar 2. 2. All right. Scalar 2, 2. All right, let's go. All right, there you go. So now that should be a little more consistent. Should have thought about that earlier. So anyway. 
back to where we were. So we're going to play on Scalar 2. And you see it passes through. We can play our chords. Oh, wait a minute. Why don't we see a chord? Well, the reason we don't see a chord is because this is set to output 2. Remember? The first output is all notes. So if we set this back to output 1 and hit the chord, we're going to see all of the chords playing in scalar 2 sub 2. Okay? If we set that channel to channel 2, channel 2 is our lowest note. So now we're only going to see the first note of that chord. In this case, it's C. We play this chord, we are going to see a D, and an E, and so forth. Now, if we turn this off for a second, I go back to one, and play this. Our second, the second note in this chord, second lowest note, is the E note. So now, we go back, this is our first lowest note, this is the next note up, and that note should be an E, as expected. Okay, now, if you look at this, what we get, we can go ahead and let's go up to note four. And if we go up to output, I should say output five, which is our fourth note, there's nothing because we're only playing three chords. Let's bounce this up to sevenths, for example. So now we're playing four notes, and we get a fourth note. Do it one more time. Go up to output six and play this. Four notes, right? But there's not a fifth note available. If we bump this up to ninths, now we have five notes. And we can play it. And we can continue the process. Five notes, don't hear anything. Go up to elevenths. Now we've got six notes, and so forth. So as you move up the MIDI channel on the scalar that's driving the instrument, in this case it's scalar driving scalar, you are accessing the higher notes. Lowest is two, and up from there. Now, that's the foundation. That's where we get started. And from there, it gets pretty interesting, quite frankly. Um, so, for example, uh, let's back up a second and let's uh, well, let's just let's let's put a let's put a performance in for a minute. Let's go ahead and get this performance going. All right, and let's go bring that guy on for a second. And right now, oh, we're not hearing anything. Wonder why? Well, our output now is set to seven. So let's back it in. Let's go back to four. All right, let's just start playing with these. So let's go ahead and uh, drop it all the way back to here. So once you start figuring out what notes in a given sequence are of interest, then you can target those notes. So for example, let's go back, uh, let's use our, uh, let's use these guys for a second. And uh, so that second note, that E right here, that E is looking kind of interesting. So if we bring this guy out, what do we get? There we go. And that E and G. So what's interesting now is I can start to combine these things. For example, let's say I want that E and that G. Right now I'm just getting, right now I'm just getting the E over here. 
Well, what I'd like is that E and that G, right, for whatever reason, okay? What I can do is I can replicate this or duplicate this track, okay, again, scalar 2, sub 2, is delivering the sound. Our first instance of scalar is delivering the MIDI. This track is grabbing channel 3, the second lowest note, and we're going to bump that up. So now we should get both of those notes. Oh, let's bring him on. There you go. So now that's probably a fair amount to absorb, but the basics are pretty simple. Enable multi-voice out, connect it to an external instrument of any kind. Then based on what you want to listen to or what notes you want to pass through, set your MIDI channel accordingly. All right. Well, from there, uh, we'll let you play with that. And I will be back uh, sometime in the near future with a subsequent video on other ways to wire multi-voice out for interesting effects. Thanks for joining us.